Hi everybody, I'm Brian with Four Knox Company and I'm going to show you how to install one of these service disconnects. This is a 60 amp box, even though we're going to be using a 40 amp breaker, this can handle up to 60 amps. This is what it looks like out of the box. See we have these two terminals here, we have a connection and then where we're going to go to our AC unit and it's separated right here. And then when you pull this out, this is our little service disconnect. So I'm going to show you how to install this, how the wiring goes. This is our AC pad. This is where our wire is coming out of the wall. So we will be securing it to the stucco here, but you can do this to whatever siding, just use the appropriate fasteners. But first, let me show you what it looks like on the inside. I know because we have the walls open on the inside that we have solid wood surface here to screw into. So I'm not worried about it being tight against the wall. I'll show you that, show you the wiring. Then we'll jump into actually hooking up the box and the wires. So when we're looking at it from the inside, you can see as I framed everything before, we did the stucco and I ran my wires. I reinforced behind the wall with blocking because I looked at my box and I saw that my knockout was low on the box. So I knew that the secure area would be up here. So I wanted to make sure I had wood up high to be able to screw into. But this is just an extra measure because I have everything open and I can do this beforehand. If you're just securing into stucco or concrete or whatever siding it is, it's usually pretty fine. There's not a lot of weight or pull on that box. But like I said, because I had this open, I just went ahead and did this so that I knew that when I screwed into it, I'd have something really solid. But if you're going to do it into the stucco or the concrete, just use a good masonry fastener or the adhesives that they have, or they have the little shoes that go inside that will help secure it. Um, but either way, this is just something behind, so I know that I'm screwing into something solid. But either way, just make sure that while you're securing it to whatever surface on the exterior, you're getting a good bite with whatever fastener you need. So right here we have a two wire, it has a black and a white. We're gonna run that up. We ran it all the way over into the garage to the panel. And as it runs over, we bring it through the garage all the way around and over here to our panel. And really quick, I wanna point out how this is actually wired. This is where I actually was confused. I thought I needed two hots because this is like a 240 volt uh, system. So with a lot of those systems, you'll have a black and a red that are your hot wires, and then you'll have a neutral and your ground. And so I was looking at running a four or an eight gauge three wire. So red, black, and white. But as I did my research and I was looking at these disconnect boxes and on the inside of the box, you just see two terminals. It just, it's like two hots or hot neutral. I didn't see two hots and a neutral to be able to disconnect the power. So I thought I was missing something, but in short, you really just need two hots and your ground. So that's why the disconnect box just has a two terminal because you're just gonna be breaking the connection between the two hots. So let me show you how that looks like in the breaker panel. I ran it into its own knockout right here on top and I wired it in right here. See, we got a 40 breaker. And like I said, we have a black and a white. You don't see anything connected here to the neutral bar. We just have that solid ground coming over here to our ground bar. And then we have two hots. So I designated this with black marks to show that this is also a secondary hot. You can tape it, marker it, or whatever it is, but we have two hots here. And the reason that is, and again, you can read up on it, but with these AC units, it has an alternating current where the hot is jumping back and forth and you don't have to have that general neutral bar, this neutral connection. You're just running off the hot and it's kind of like alternating back and forth. So all you need is those two hot connections at the uh, disconnect on the outside. And once I figured that out, then it made sense why the disconnect only has those two terminals. So I wasn't missing anything. I could save a little bit of money and not buying a three wire that had a white, black, and red. And I can go ahead and move forward. And I knew that I would have everything set up properly. So let's go ahead and set up that disconnect box. So now that we're ready to hook up the box, I know that I have my knockout there in one of these bottom corners. I'll line that up there, knock it out, and then I'll mark where this first hole is. Then I can drill into here, put a screw through, pulling this through. And before I secure it right here around the opening and around the back of the box. So when I push it against the stucco, I know I have a good seal. I'll also be sealing around the outside of the box with this stuff. This quad max, this OSI stuff. This is some of the toughest exterior caulking that you can find. Um, it is a little bit more expensive, but I use it on special occasions for things that I really want to make sure can hold up to the weather out here. So I got my knock out there. We got our wire pulled through. Gonna go ahead and make a little mark right there. Then I'll come back, drill this hole first through the stucco. I wanna make sure that's clean. Then we'll put the caulking around here, press it up against the wall, secure it, 
then we can go ahead and strip these wires and get them connected. So now I have this hole pre-drilled and you can see here, I got a good layer of that caulking all the way around the inside of the wire. And I, I built it up a good amount so that when this goes up against the rough stucco, it'll seal around the outside of this knockout. And then at the very end, we'll seal around the box too. But this is just to make sure that no way any moisture or water is getting inside that wall. Okay, so I got that secure. I put a little washer on there just to make sure that it has a lot more grab around the outside of the metal there. We have caulking there where the wire's coming through. I threw a level on this, and then we're gonna put one more screw down here in this bottom hole. Then we'll put a little bit more caulking on here just to seal it, and we can strip this back and connect it. So we have our box level. We have it secured top and bottom. I put a little bit more caulking around here, and we will caulk around the outside. But now let's go ahead and strip this back. We'll connect our two hots. I'm just gonna use both right terminals here. And then when we hook up our AC unit, they'll go to these two and that will connect them. And then we'll do our ground right here. And then the ground from the AC will go right here. So I have the casing stripped back and we have our black wire. And then we have our other one that's gonna be a hot that I designated with the black markings and then our bare copper. So go ahead and connect one of these to each side then the bare copper to this ground bar right here. And just like that, we have everything connected. This is the power coming in and then we'll have the power going out to our AC unit once we hook up our condenser. But this is how you install a service disconnect, two hots, the ground, get it weatherproof there, secure it properly to the house. Then you can put your disconnect bar, which we have right here. We'll put it facing up right now, which says off. And if you were to turn it around, that actually has these teeth that connect these two and these two. So you'd pop that on and then that will run power. So if you ever have to come out here, you wanna pull the power real quick and disconnect the service. That's how you do it. And of course, we got our good layer of caulking all the way around. We usually just do the three sides. That way, if moisture does get behind, it can drain and dry out the bottom. And then we obviously have plenty of caulking around the inside of this casing. And I stuffed more in that way. So this stuff, I can't say enough good stuff about it. This stuff right here, this OSI, I use it for anything extreme exterior. It holds up really good in the weather. You can get it in different colors. I usually go with like clear or white, and I believe you can paint over it if you need to. But this is how we're gonna make sure that no moisture gets behind here in this wall. So I hope you found that a little bit helpful. Just wanted to show you how you can wire in your service disconnect. Like I said, the most confusing thing for me was I thought I needed that eight four wire like with the red, black, white, and I didn't understand how it was gonna hook up to the breaker and the panel. And then also inside that disconnect, there wasn't enough terminals. So once I figured that out, then I kind of understood where we were going with it. It's pretty straightforward. Main thing is that you run the proper gauge wire for this 40 amp breaker, I believe we're using like a four gauge and um, sometimes they use an eight, but you know, the lower number, the bigger the gauge. Can't really go wrong with going maybe a step up and go bigger, but the uh, my AC tech said that that's what he would prefer. So I ran the proper wire that he wanted, but I wanted to get it all wired in and set up so that he can come in and put in the condenser. He can hook right up to the box and pretty soon we'll have some air conditioning in here. Once we get the insulation and everything else sealed up, of course, but just in case you have to replace one or you want to install one and you're kind of wondering how it goes together. I hope you found the video helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments there. I'm good at getting back to those and I'll see you guys on the next one.